Hello and welcome to Short Shift. I'm Ryan. And I'm Krish. And this is a 2023 Toyota Highlander Hybrid. And yeah. it certainly is the most family-oriented car we've had so far on the channel. And what do you think about it? I am currently kind of enjoying myself. Again, um, this is a different approach from our normally performance-oriented reviews. It's winter time. It's, you know, maybe we're thinking, you know, it's time to review an all-wheel drive family SUV. Yeah. Since a lot of people are, are currently in the market, you know, how do you think the driving experience is? Like, I let's think start as start. a family vehicle, it's got a lot of comfort. The steering is pretty light. It's nice to drive, stuff like that. Personally, yeah. do enjoy like the driving, the driving dynamics specifically don't feel weird. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like a large vehicle drives pretty nice, especially with the hybrid system. The power pickup is pretty nice. Yeah, it's definitely like, of course, if you try to put your foot on the floor, mm -hmm. it's not going to really go anywhere. But when you're driving around town and when you're like around 25 to 30 percent throttle, the EV motor kicks in and like balances out the gas engine, the four cylinder. Um, of course, when you get to this weight and size it does yeah. become somewhat lacking but again it's industry standard like the new pilot is around 280 290 the volkswagen atlas is a 280 or 270 yeah. it's around that range yeah. as well so they're all in the same area but this it's a very standard hybrid yeah. it's not a plug-in hybrid so exactly. you're not going to get like long range kind of yeah. charging electric kind of range stuff like that yeah of course you yeah. can scale down a tiny bit get a rav4 prime but if you're looking for a seven six seater this is yeah this car the best option in my opinion yeah it's one of the best options i personally yeah. still prefer the pilot mm. it's just because it has a new and revised powertrain and i feel like a lot of suspension issues that this car i personally feel that it has aren't in the pilot so yeah i have a sneaking suspicion that the suspension in this car is the exact same for the normal non-hybrid cars mm -hmm. and now that they've added high like a, high, a really heavy hybrid battery a really big battery and like more weight they haven't redamped and retained the suspension so the car actually feels disturbed over bumps so it's you know it's really pleasant to drive but again it just comes down to like every time we go over a bump i feel like it's giving me two to three like it's finding two to three times to just wiggle me or wobble me around yeah yeah it's like, a weird combination yeah. of hard and soft hard suspension and soft. yeah because soft suspension wafts you over the bump right like yeah. you'll know that you hit a bump but it's like supple it damps it and you know in most german cars it just gives you one bump you're done yeah right? there's no multiple bumps and that's the exact yeah. issue we have yeah is that it certainly feels like it's floating yeah. while we're also feeling a lot of these minor kind of like road imperfections it's really annoying is pretty consistent with some other suvs that are like this but this one i feel personally just feel is one of the worst when it comes to its comfort and suspension mm -hmm. and but, while we're in here mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about the luxury amenities that come with such a vehicle right yeah like from toyota like these plush seats they're really comfortable and also but, the steering wheel too yeah it's very plush feels very pleasant yeah. although the issue is it's not perforated Mm -hmm. There might be an issue of your hands sweating quite a lot yeah. during long road trips. But so far, it's fine. It's also heated, yeah. at least for the Canadian market. And also, a huge sunroof that doesn't really eat into your headroom space. Which and is kinda... it makes the car feel really airy. It does. A lot of cars suffer from that claustrophobic feeling because yes. they put design first mm -hmm. and then create a crap little blind spots and stuff for you. And of course, we're in this blue that's called Blueprint. Blueprint. Which oh my God. Toyota with their interesting name. That is it. so cringy. <laughs> which oh, is, man. yeah. So I guess, you know, they're trying to have fun, which um, I'll give them props for at least, you know, they're trying. But I don't mind that, yeah. No, yeah, you know it's what? Fine. It's fine. At least they're not taking themselves too seriously, unlike mm. the design of the car, which does feel very serious. It does feel quite serious. And since I stopped, mm -hmm. I noticed the brake pedal, although it has regen braking, is probably one of the best ones I've felt so far. It doesn't feel like it's any sort of like odd kind of uh, mm -hmm. mismatch of like, are you regening? Are you using uh, physical brakes? Yeah. No, it feels normal. And I just also want to just mention the fact that this car just i feel like it's very sedan like in all other aspects because again it is based on a camry and it's, it's yeah. a priusified suv if you think about it right yes not a plug-in hybrid it's an engine or a motor driven hybrid although i do so, like if toyota you're watching yeah. this please make a prime version of this i'm sure a lot of hybrid people are going to get that 400 yeah. horsepower so we're going to do a uh, thing that many people do with highlanders of course, we're going to go to a Walmart. We are at a Walmart, actually. Yeah, we are at and a we're Walmart We're going to get right some groceries. Not going to say what it is until you watch it. Yeah. And just to test out like the cargo space. Yeah. yeah, the trunk capacity, see how it compares to something. 
you know? Yeah. Well, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Oh, perfect. Oh boy, here we go again. That one. It fits a banana. <laughs> so yeah, time to get my own sort of driving impressions for this car before we pull over and do some exterior and oh, interior yeah. reviewing. Um, the auto start stop because of the hybrid system in this car very seamless i can't even tell when it goes onto the power well, i can tell because of the rumbling from the engine yeah but it's so like you can't tell when it kicks in it just it's so seamless and they blended it really well and i back up ryan on almost everything he said as to how the car drives and how the car feels we're just going to take it onto the highway real quick of course it is the 401 which i personally believe is the worst hell spawn of a highway to ever exist and the good part is it doesn't feel like a yeah. big, big car. And on the highway, kind of... it's actually a lot better. So I think this is a better highway cruiser. Yeah, surprisingly. And like the pickup's good. Yeah, it's actually really good. We went from one legal speed to another legal speed. Yeah, 110 to 110, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if OPP, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. But... <laughs> uh, it's over. Yeah, it's only... Yeah. Only, yeah. Uh, so it, it definitely goes. And what I really like is a lot of people nag on the CVT for like, oh, it's like an economically minded transmission. Yes, but it also keeps you the power band the whole time. So it can basically replicate infinite gearing, which I really like. Of course, it does come to the detriment of uh, the sound. And the driving experience. Yeah, definitely. because people don't just like, like the sound of a high revving car. They like it when it's like building, right? But when you're there the whole time, you're but like- also, are the people who are buying this car care? Do they no, care that much? No, they don't care at all. That's that's why a CVT makes perfect sense. It's like my sort of performance mindedness that comes through whenever, you know, I test drive these sorts of cars. Yeah, Again, after reviewing three different performance Yeah, vehicles. after like a 911 and yeah. an RS7, like, you know, to jump into one of these. It's definitely a yeah. refreshing experience, having to experience- uh, Yeah, for sure. A family vehicle like this, something that's more toned mm -hmm. down, chill, you know. Yeah. So do you want to get off the highway and maybe check out the outside? Yeah, sure. Perfect. All right, that was a drive from Walmart. What'd you think? I think it drives like your average uh, family SUV again, as we've mentioned while we were driving it. Mm -hmm. It's all right, but shall we move on to the exterior shots? Yeah, I think so. The front grille, it looks smart. It's, it's, it's a Toyota. Like if you look at it, you think Toyota instantly. The GR Corolla, the new Corolla, even the new Camry. All the they have like this corporate grill now, which is mm -hmm. like this aggressive catfish sort of like like mouth or glob that it has. Yeah. But it looks good. It looks good. It's a good looking yeah. car for sure. But and also like what the, stood yeah. out as not good from the grill is that the badge. I, it just looks so weird on this one. Yeah, it looks like it was spray canned on by a teenager, yeah. which it wasn't. Uh, it's just that the older Toyota badges used to have a very subtle dark blue outline. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't. So there's that. And then also I really like the fact that I think a lot of Toyotas are doing this where the grills, you know, it's like this sort of, uh, you know, the older Chryslers where they had that sort of uh, mustache sort of grill yeah. that starts here. And then it goes here and then it kicks up into the headlight, which I kind of really like. And like, you know, the way it's like really nice and angular and just works with the body lines. And as well, like this DRL, is, it looks really smart, especially yeah. for a Toyota, correct, right? Yeah. And it's actually a full LED coming from a Toyota. That's kind of surprising. I wouldn't say surprising, but like you wouldn't expect Well, it to is with the times now, right? They should the be expected to do that considering yeah. other brands have been doing it for mm. a while. And but would you say this fog light kind of placement is smart or something? Personally, it could have done more. It's but... a little weird, it's a but... Weird. I like it. I, okay. I, I just, I'm so tired of brands like doing weird for weird sake yeah. or not being weird enough where mm. Toyota's kind of just, I think they've hit, hit a sweet spot here. Like this it, is, it, it is a balance. Anyways, mm -hmm. LED turn signals on the mirrors. And of course yeah. this body line continues forward and stuff like that. It's smart. It's honestly a really clean design. And of course it's got to mention it's an all wheel drive model, yeah. you know, stuff like that. I was about that. to mention that. So normally most brands put stickers there. The fact that really? it's a badge is actually kind of cool because most brands like um, like upscale brands of course like audi and stuff would put it there mm -hmm. like quattro or like you know like again like v6 or something like that but it Very looks bad. really awkward to it me really I, I feel like it just i feel like that belonged to the rear 
and yeah. someone at Toyota was like, hmm, I wonder if we just put it on the door as well. So the, the rear fender, so they pulled out the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially the with the dirt on the car, you can yeah. easily tell there's a body line right there. Yeah. It flows well. They didn't have to pull it out because that costs a lot of money to basically yeah. make a door and then have to pull out the rear fender specifically mm. for this. Anyways, right. on to the rear. It's a very smart looking rear as well. And we got to mention the letters are individual individual yeah they didn't like do one of those bars that most brands do where they just like do a single casting like, namely toyota does that. yeah this is, this so that's surprising toyota. yeah good job and of course we got to mention it's a hybrid you know stuff like that and i like the hybrid badge that's a spoiler that is a spoiler i didn't realize that actually blends so well into like the car is it the too much no i think it's fine i think it looks great like you know now that you emphasize it maybe but like yeah. i didn't notice it like i don't these, think most people do this this a lot but i don't think it matters of course, too we need downforce in the car right bruh led tail lights are standard <laughs> stuff like that no turn signals don't i don't why. like the halogen molds yeah i mean At it's around 60 70 000 all in having halogen bulbs is kind of like i mean it's, I it's a that, little thing like you know when brake lights are led yeah. it's just the, the they're all leds are... yeah it's just the turn signals are halogen and they reverse the halogen which uh... again i feel like if that's the only issue you have with an exterior of a car i think they've done a pretty good job this addition of a kick plate it's kind of rare on suvs because... no damage paint work and stuff like that it's a nice yeah. addition over there so so uh here here's a personal uh thing my car i have a scratch on my side of the bumper because i don't have a kick plate there and i yeah. don't know who it was but someone dragged some cargo on my bumper and put a nice little uh, scar on my it's rear a bumper. deep one so like, it's, it's a pretty yeah. deep one yeah that that uh, i was quite around four to five hundred dollars to fix yeah so, Which, so definitely to. toyota has thought about yeah, everything so they definitely here. thought about that yeah, yeah. so i'm kind of glad that they added a kick plate here these reflectors mm -hmm. they're fine you know there's no fake exhaust or whatnot here as I, well I don't no. know how to feel about this bit of plastic cladding. It looks a bit... It's okay. It's, it's, it's okay. okay. I just... It looks odd to me. I just wish they did something. There like is either. a reason as to why they did that. Right. It's so if you do get in like a rear end collision, it's going to hit that, not the... Yeah, the and then part. it's like also like mud and stuff. Like it doesn't get on your paint, doesn't damage yeah. your paint, like brushes or whatever. Yeah. If you're high landing in your Highlander... Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> maybe that's where the name came from, but it got to a different crowd. I don't know. They should be called it the H and M Lander. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the Mall Lander. But yeah. <laughs> it's a really nice looking car. There's really yeah. no offensive kind of design, body line, whatever. It's it's car. It is and car. It's and car. <laughs> you know, it's, it's... But yeah, I think that's it for the exterior. Let's move on to the interior. Yeah. Hell yeah and we're in the interior how do you like it i think compared to the last highlander this is a big step up it, yeah it, it all it feels like we're it's very 10 years modern. in the future exactly it's a lot more <laughs> modern especially lot with these nice types of like, feeling like you, you can see a lot is carried from the lexus mm -hmm. and it's it's very apparent like this larger screen these like climate dials stuff yeah. like that as well as like these kinds of design like look at the stitching dude yeah, right. This I think it's worth its price point, definitely. Like, it if is. it looks like leather, it most likely is like a sort of leatherette material. And I also do like the semi-integrated uh, screen. So a lot of brands yeah. that they just tack on a tablet. This mm -hmm. at least like looks like they at least tried yeah. with the sort of like blade that comes in through here. So yeah. this like sort of metal plated plastic that you know creates yeah. this sort of like L sort of design, which is very Lexus. -like. Definitely up with so, the interior a whole lot. Yeah, no, this feels like a Lexus interior. Yeah, in a fact. lot of different materials used, even like yeah. the doors. It's right? really nice, like this, almost. Is this fake wood? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I think looks that, that looks like vinyl. Um, I, you have to step up to again the Lexus model. Like, honestly, the there's no quality issue in this car. Like everything looks great. Like it feels great. Yeah, and a lot of like Center usable, stable, like barely yeah. any wobble. Like I'm pushing. It. Even like the shifter and stuff. Like this is a soft rubberish material. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it wobbles a bit. And th these egg speakers on the A pillar are a bit weird, in my opinion. It's yeah, I'm not a fan of how rotund <laughs> they are. It, it feels like they almost came off of another car. It they weren't certainly even probably did. Yeah, it looks really out because of place. Because everything in this car is very square and very like angular. To then have they, this, they could have made like a flush speaker grill, but they did not. It looks like a Kinder egg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> personal opinion. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to make this, like, a bad infotainment, but it certainly is better than the, like, previous, previous one. Oh, like, anything's Texas. better than the previous one. This one is nice, looks better. It's just a bit lackluster in the functionality. I expected a lot more, unfortunately. But it's a good system, where in the sense that it's basic and it gives you whatever you need, and nothing more, nothing less, right? Like, if you yeah. want an infotainment system, here's an infotainment system. And it's not laggy at all. It's Yeah, really no, in fact, we were in a 911 recently, and that That's... somehow has l far less responsive. They're the same model year. This is far more responsive than the systems that Porsche is using. And this is not 911 specific. I've even been in the Cayenne. Same issue. Maybe Toyota's onto something, but that's a gauge. That's new. That's really new. It's actually. a really nice looking gauge cluster. I will say the black levels aren't as good as uh -huh. they can be. I like the purple. Like the, yeah, the purple, purple like view. that, you know, and comes with when the, you do yeah. switch to drive mode, it does show on the screen, like the car on there. The graphics like, are really nice. I like how the rims glow. <laughs> like that's a, that's a feature they didn't need to add, but like it's that's. I personally cool. love how, of course, dynamic it is. Yeah. Do you want to head to the rear? Maybe actually, yes. yeah. Alrighty, the rear. It's actually really nice and spacious back here. Of course, you know, at the expense of the third row. Although we've yeah. had someone, some people at the third row. Mm -hmm. So this uh, is actually yeah. a captain's chair kind of uh, configuration, and you get these lovely like individual armrests. They're nice and padded. Like they're yeah. soft. Cup holders, two USB C chargers, and then your air AC one, vents here. A 120 volt outlet. That's yeah, surprising. that's kind of cool, right? You have a household. So what you can do is just plug it in, and then you know, yeah. if you're in a, on a long trip, which this car has mm -hmm. been on a very long trip, mm -hmm. plug in your laptop, do whatever you want in the back. It's mm -hmm. really nice and spacious. Like you can lounge basically. You can just drop this back. Adjustable seats, stuff it's like nice. that. Oh, whoops. There's like those shades yeah. over there as well for your windows, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. It's, again, it's very minivan-like. Yeah. It's just in the form or shape of an SUV. And it does share its chassis with the Sienna. Mm. So they're... Maybe that's why it looks very, like a minivan. Yeah, so. that's why, you know, like, again, yeah. engineering hard points, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, it's really nice. And then, you know, it's... Free zone climate as well. Yeah. The ability to just change everything on the go. And then it's all, like, physical buttons. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be cheaper for them to just put an LCD screen. Yeah, absolutely. And let you click it. Yeah, and then you have a USB-C. Yeah, yeah. Two USB-Cs, actually. That's kind of useful. I do wish they had a USB-A back here as well. I mean, you normally most people don't. Like, that's an old yeah. tech thing. At least they yeah. include one At in the At least they front, have one in know? the front. But, again, a lot of my chargers are still USB-A to C. Or I mean, that's USB why the 120 volts. Yeah, USB-C to light. So, you can still use a power so break you know, yeah, there. So, that's yeah. perfectly fine. But, but yeah. that's basically the rear area. Yeah. Stuff like that. It's really nice. Pretty honestly. nice. Yeah, I, I like I, it. I, yeah, I enjoy it. <laughs> If you're shopping for an all-wheel drive family SUV that can seat up to 8 people with a hybrid system that boosts fuel economy, look no further as this Highlander is truly one of the best of its class. Thanks to our friend Jacob for lending us his family's Highlander for us to review. And thanks for watching this video, like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you like to be notified about more videos from us. This is my mom's <laughs> Highlander hybrid. And I'm going to be talking about cars and <laughs> 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 I'm choking my